Hey guys, I'm Mike Caviani. I'm the Dog Behavior Program Manager here at Austin Pets Alive. And in this video, we're going to cover loose leash walks. That's our introduction to teaching your dog how to walk really nicely out on a walk. So, loose leash walk, that's, that's the first one. We teach working walk as well. That's the more perfected one. Uh, that's the second part. So you'll see that video to advance your dog to a really nice walk right by your side. For loose leash walk, we're more lenient in loose leash walk. That's just the intro to the dog, to this new concept of not pulling, and it's the intro to the human of this new concept of using your legs to teach the dog not to walk, not to pull, as opposed to your arms, which we'll get into because it's different. So for loose leash walk, as I said, we're being lenient. We're just saying you can't pull. We're not saying you have to be right here in position, right by my side. We're not saying you have to be on any particular side. We're really just saying you can't pull, but this is the time for them to maybe, like the, when you start your walk, I would usually be in loose leash walk. They're out, they're excited. They might, it's, it's, it's too much to ask them to be right next to you at the very beginning of your walk. Let's let them go out, stretch their legs, pee, you know, do their, do their whole thing, sniff, be a dog. And then after they've done that, now we can do working walk. So for loose leash walk, we always start out with one hand on the leash. You're gonna see Amy Jones in a second with one of our dogs going over this so that you can see it. And I'm gonna be narrating exactly what she's doing so you can see it out on the fly in reality. But let's talk about a couple concepts while we're just here together, just one-on-one. -on -one. So for loose leash walk, why do we use our legs? I mentioned we use our legs instead of our hands. So dogs have a reflex called oppositional reflex. What that means is when a dog feels like they're being pulled in one direction, they naturally brace against it. So if you think about your average walk, the dog pulls, you pull with your hands. They pull, you pull with your hands. We're actually activating that oppositional reflex. They pull, you pull, which makes them pull, which makes you pull, which makes them pull. And it's this game of tug of war. And you might eventually wear the dog down to the point where they're just like, fine. But it probably was not the best experience for anybody, for the dog, or for you, no one had fun. It was probably just a, you know, just kind of a drag, no pun intended for everybody, okay? So that's why we are gonna use our legs actually, because also if you think about it, if you want your dog to be not pulling and to be closer to you, and you're just pulling them into you, they may be coming to you, but they're just feeling this the whole time. So why would they even want to come to you if they're feeling all this just pressure and restriction the entire time they're coming to you. That kind of muddies the picture. So that's why we use our legs instead of our hands. That pressure will be applied when that dog's far away. But as soon as they move closer to you, the pressure leaves immediately, which can be very motivating to the dog, and be very clear to the dog on why it's better to be closer to you instead of pulling at the end of the leash. All right, so let's see how it goes. It'll be Amy Jones, our adoption follow-up coordinator, working with one of our dogs up for adoption currently, and let's, let's see it. <laughs> All right, so we're doing loose leash walk. Amy here is walking with Mona. She's just walking up and down this painted line right here on the field just so you guys have an idea of what route she's going. So she's walking up and down with Mona. So we are in loose leash walk. That means the dog doesn't have to be right, right next to you or anything like that. We're giving her freedom. She can be wherever she really wants other than pulling. As soon as Mona pulls, your feet go in the opposite direction. So the mechanics here, one hand on the leash. We don't really care which hand you're using. We don't care which side Mona's on. We don't care if she's behind you or in front of you or to the side of you. All we care about is that that leash goes taut. If that leash goes taut, just like that, your feet go in the opposite direction until that leash loosens again. Then you keep going the way you wanna go. So that leash goes straight. Amy simply moves her feet in the opposite direction until that leash loosens. And then as soon as it does, you go forward again. Mona there kind of changed multiple directions. So Amy ended up having to almost circle. But again, you're really just moving your feet in the opposite direction that dog pulls, just as long as that leash is staying tight. Once that leash drops and is loose, just like that, 
you can be heading the way you want to go. That leash tightens, your feet go in the opposite direction. Once there's a looseness again, then your feet can go the way you want to go again. So Amy's walking now away from us, and Mona's fine as long as that leash is loose. It tightens, Amy moves to the side, and then she'll keep going the way she wants to go. And Mona can tend to do this little helicopter thing sometimes, so that's why Amy's had to kind of circle a few times. But you just want to be thinking about the opposite direction that the dog is pulling. So if Amy's walking towards us and Mona's pulling behind her, Amy's walking forward. If Mona pulls to the left, Amy moves to the right. If Mona pulls to the left, Amy, you know, you got, you got what I'm saying, right? So dog pulls forward, you move backwards. Dog, dog pulls to the right, you move to the left, so on and so forth. And it's all about the legs, okay? Notice Amy has not used her hands at all to yank Mona into her space, right? She's not pulling with her hands. She's not doing any kind of forceful jerking with her hands at all. She's just moving her feet calmly in the opposite direction. That way, as soon as Mona takes even a half a step towards Amy, the leash pressure leaves immediately. And then that's very motivating to the dog. Oh, okay, got it, near you, no pressure, away from you, that's where I feel pressure. So this is one of Mona's first lessons outside in a new environment. So she's piecing it together, but see, it's getting even, it's getting smoother as the film's going. We're seeing Mona's starting to pull less and less. Amy's just staying real consistent with her footwork. And Amy is walking at the pace she wants to walk. You're not gonna walk faster just because the dog is walk, wanting to walk faster. This is still your set in the tone. For loose leash walk, we are being more lenient, working walk, which you'll see in another video. That's where we are being stricter. That's where the dog does have to be right by your side. It's more than just not pulling. But we're in loose leash walk right now. You would, you know, kind of decide during your walk when you want to be in loose leash walk and when you want to be in working walk. Loose leash walk's definitely where you want to give the dog the freedom to go to the bathroom. That's how you'd usually want to start your walk, is start your walk in loose leash walk since the dog's been cooped up. So beginning of your walk or anytime you're out on a walk and you want to give the dog a break, give the dog some freedom to stretch their legs and not have to be glued to you, you're in loose leash walk. So again, one hand on the leash, doesn't matter which hand. You've even seen Amy switch hands a few times. But we're not stopping unless you want to stop. We're not turning around unless you want to turn around. The technique is all simply the feet move in the opposite direction until that leash is loose. Once that leash is loose, you're good to walk whatever direction you want to go. That leash is loose right now. Amy's just walking back towards us. So that leash is still loose, we're still fine. All of this is good, all of this is good. No issues at all. That's one full lap with no need for footwork, which is great. Amy's gonna be turning around now, so she just needs to show Mona that, you know, we are going this direction. She was distracted by the camera. So now we're walking that direction. That leash is still loose, so we're still fine. Mona pulled backwards, Amy just moved her feet forward. That one's a really good demo right there. A lot of people when the dog pulls behind them, they want to turn around and go back to the dog or they want to pull with their, with their hands. When Amy just moved her feet forward there, as soon as Mona took a step towards Amy, the pressure was gone. We'll have another one here, watch. As soon as Amy walked forward, Mona just followed. So a, a lot of you probably have that problem where your dog gets distracted by smells and wants to stop too much. You know, every, you, can, you can stop and let them smell whenever you want to, but when they're pulling you to go smell something, just move your feet in the opposite direction, just like Amy's doing. She's not yanking with her hands, just kind of engaging her core, moving her feet, and then the dog has to follow. So just consistency is the key, not pulling with your hands, not getting sloppy and rushing any of this. The dog will absolutely pick up on it. You guys can see Mona was pulling a lot more at the beginning of this film. Now she's walking pretty nicely. So we're just looking for that loose leash, no tension, and that's all there really is for loose leash walk. Working walk, again, that's gonna be a lot more strict. That's where we're gonna say the dog has to be right next to you. But this is a pretty good example of loose leash walk. That's Mona and Amy. You can see Mona smoothing out. All we're saying is that leash has to be loose and we're good. That leash tightens, feet go in the opposite direction. All right, that's loose leash walk. Thanks guys, thanks Amy. Good job, Mona.